There is an issue that has been raised that comes uh, back often to the issue of time. Mm -hmm. In the area of archaeology, how do you establish the chronology and, and those dates? What do you use to do that? That's an important question because ultimately the ancients didn't have the same absolute calendar that we have today. And it's very difficult, very challenging to understand exactly when things transpired and along the timeline that goes back into ancient history. So there are several methods that we have to rely on. One, for example, with the Neo-Assyrian Neo Empire is that they had a, an, a, a, what was called an eponymic dating method where they dated every year according to the main event that transpired hmm. during that year. And so every year was named after that year, such as 2001 in the United States, of course, would be uh, the Twin Towers coming down in New York City. And because of the fact that they record a number of important events that we can trace and we can identify and plot on the absolute time scale, we're able to correlate their records with the timing of absolute dating. So that's one thing that's very helpful, but ultimately that mainly helps us with the first millennium BC. It doesn't help us much with the second and third millennium hmm. BC. Now a second uh, method for obtaining dates and, and coming to a good understanding of chronology with ancient history is uh, related to organic material, such as plant life or mm -hmm. animal life. If we can find something that lived, something that had an organic element to it, we're able to, through radiocarbon dating, establish a range, not a specific mm -hmm. date, but a range of time, and we can be fairly well confident about the dating based on the radiocarbon decay that goes all the way back to about 1400 BC.